our finite supply of fossil fuels cannot keep up with the world's ever-increasing energy demands. This energy crisis is one of the greatest of our time and researchers from the University of Melbourne are working towards a solution. We have over 150 researchers working in seven different faculties and the objective of the Energy Institute is to bring that work, those workers together to, um, to highlight the work and, and, and to show how it's making a difference um, to the broader community. Dr Greg Martin is leading a team of researchers who are investigating efficient methods for producing liquid fuels from various biomass feedstocks, including algae. So what we have here is um, a simple bag culture where we have uh, microscopic algae suspended in a nutrient broth, getting exposed to sunlight, photosynthesizing and generating more and more biomass. The potential of these so-called biofuels is considerable, given that they are renewable, can be produced in large volumes, can be close to CO2 neutral and be used directly in today's vehicles. There's probably a fair amount of research still to go. Uh, but there's a number of research groups, ourselves included, around the world that are trying to, trying to get a process up and running. In many ways, technology exists, it's just not economically viable yet. University of Melbourne researchers are key players in Australia's first pre-combustion carbon capture research project, led by the Cooperative Research Centre for Greenhouse Gas Technologies. This world-leading collaborative research organisation is focused on carbon dioxide capture and storage, a key tool for reducing greenhouse gas emissions to the atmosphere. The University of Melbourne has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Better Place Australia to explore the social, political and environmental impacts of a mass adoption of electric vehicles. You definitely can't go past biofuels and biofuels are essential, for example, for air transport because there's not much you can do otherwise. For ground transport, your options are probably electrical vehicles and a variety of renewable energies that can supply electrical energy. Professor Ivan Marils is also leading a team of researchers in a project aimed at exploring the best way to implement the mass adoption of electric cars. If we just put cars into the grid now, we would actually virtually double the consumption. And the grid could not cope with that unless you really double the size of the network. What you want to do is to use the spare capacity in the grid to charge the batteries. And how you do that requires a very smart grid. So that we are actually focusing on how to do that well. Geothermal energy has been used for thousands of years. And Professor Ian Johnson is working towards harnessing this totally renewable, totally sustainable, 24-7 energy source for 21st century needs. If we were to take just 1% of the heat energy that is stored within the top 5 kilometres of the Earth's surface, we could supply all the world's energy for well over 10,000 years. There's basically two main projects being conducted in the university. The first one is when we take heat from depths of about 4 kilometres, we bring that heat to the surface and we generate electricity and we're looking at the possibility and feasibility of uh, accessing this heat for electricity generating in um, Victoria and we're emphasising on the Latrobe Valley. The second form is the direct form where we use the heat that's close to the Earth's surface, about within a few tens of metres, and we use this and exchange it to heat and cool buildings. We're actually putting an installation up by the University Sports Centre and we're going to be using this to monitor it and to heat and cool uh, part of the Sports Centre. We are putting far too much carbon dioxide in the air as it is. Uh, there is no doubt about it that it's all human uh, carbon dioxide we're putting in the air and we are stressing our environment. So if we can reduce the stress on our environment, we are going to be the better off for it. Mm -hmm.